guys, welcome back to Elevate Chem. I'm Jesse and this is the exam walkthrough for the 2014 VCE chemistry exam. And in this episode, we'll be looking at questions 11 through 20 of the multiple choice section. Getting right into it, consider the following unbalanced ionic equation given right here. When this equation is completely balanced, the coefficient of mercury, HD, liquid will be. What we need to do for this question is balance the chemical equation. The first thing I'm going to do is balance the elements. And I'm going to start off with oxygen. You can see I have 7 on the left, so I'll make sure we have 7 on the right by adding a 7 for the coefficient of water. I now have 14 hydrogens on the right, and I can balance that by adding a little 14 in there. On the left, I see I have 2 chromium, and to balance that out, I'll make it 2 Cr3 plus on the right. I now need to balance my charges, and I'm going to ignore the mercury for now. I can see on the left, I have 14 plus and a 2 minus, giving me over a charge of 12 plus. And on the right, again excluding the mercury, I have 2 times 3 plus, so 6 plus, and there's no other charged species. That means on the right hand side, I'm going to need an additional 6 plus charge in order to balance out this equation. I have a mercury 2 plus, and if I have three mercury 2 pluses, that'll provide me with an additional 6 plus to give us overall a 12 plus charge on the right hand side. Now to balance out the elements, I need to turn, make sure my mercury on the left hand side of the equation also has a 3 coefficient. That gives me answer C. Moving on to question 12, I'm look, what I'm looking at here is a gas chromatograph, and this is a, the chromatogram itself. Question 12 asks, what is the order of the alkanols from the highest molar mass to the lowest molar mass? From reading this question right here, guys, I can see I don't actually need this text up here. It is useful, however, to keep in mind it does mention that there are four straight alkanol, chain alkanols, that there aren't any particularly weird species going on. And that means the primary thing that's going to affect their retention time is simply their molar mass. The thing that gets retained the longest is going to have the highest molar mass, and the thing that gets retained the least, the smallest lower mass. So if we're going from highest to lowest, that means it should be V, U, T, then S, and that corresponds to answer A. Question 13. We now have the mass spectrum of the alkanol uh, T, and it's given below. And the important bit about this entire spectrum, guys, is this peak right here. This is the parent peak, or the parent ion, and due to it having a molecular weight of 60, uh, if we do some arithmetic, or rather if we work out the molecular mass of all of these species, you will see that for propan 1-ol, which is C3H7OH, has a molecular weight of 60 grams per mole, which indicates it is the correct answer. So that would be 3 times 12, plus 7 times 1, plus 16, plus 1, then that gives 60 as required. Moving on to the next question, question 14. We've got a TLC plate, and it's set up with a non-polar solvent, hexane, polar stationary phase, silica gel, chromatographic graph was obtained. And what we're looking for is the RF value. Now the RF value is defined as compound, minus origin, divide by solvent, minus origin, where all of these are the distances, of course. So the distance from the compound to the origin is 16 minus 2, divide by the distance from the solvent to the origin, which is 20 minus 2, that gives me 14 on 18, and that corresponds to 0 0.78, which is answer B. In question 15, we have an NMR in front of us, certainly one of the trickiest subjects, I think. So we've got a carbon-13 NMR, so we're going to be looking at the different carbon environments. And the key thing that we can see here is there's three distinct peaks, excluding the trimethyl silane, which means that there are three distinct carbon environments. What you need to do in this question, guys, was draw out all of these uh, molecules, and you'd see that for 2 methyl propan one ol which looks like this, CH3, H, and C. And 
Now I've left these methyl groups as simply abbreviated to CH3, just to save me some time. And what I can see is that there's one, two, and then three methyl groups here. So that means that the correct answer is the 2-methylpropanol, which is answer C. If you were to try any of those other um, substances, you would have seen that they had two carbon environments rather than the three that this spectrum showed. We're going to need this information for questions 16 and 17. Jumping right into question 16, I'm going to ignore all of this text first and see what the question asked me. The concentration of copper in a test solution can be determined most accurately from the Carroll pressure the curve if it is between. Now, the common answer here, guys, was the 0 to 5 because that's the range over which that line uh, travels. However, the accurate section is actually between the tested values, which in this case was between 1 and 4 ppm, giving us answer C. Question seven, 17, sorry. They threw in a lot of little tricks and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. If the test solution gave an absorbance reading of 0 0.4, so sketching that along here, comes down to roughly 2.5 ppm. And at this stage, many students circled response A. However, that means they didn't read the full question, because it says, what would be the concentration of copper ions in the solution in moles per litre? So they put that in there just to trip you guys up, which was uh, very kind of them. So 2.5 ppm is equal to 2.5 milligrams per litre. And that information or that conversion is also given up here if you needed it. And once I've got 2.5 milligrams per litre, that means I have 2.5 by 10 to the minus 3 grams per litre. In order to get that into moles per litre, I divide by the molar mass of copper, which is 2.5 by 10 to the minus 3, divide by 63.5 to yield 3.9 by 10 to the minus 5 moles litre and that corresponds to answer C. Question 18. What techniques would be used to determine the concentration of phosphate in water? I usually go with actually reading that little last line of the question first and then reading the text. So we're looking for the concentration of phosphate in the water, reading the question to determine the amount of phosphate in a sample of polluted water. A colored solution is produced by adding excess molybovinate <laughs> reagent to the water sample. The key word in this entire question here, guys, is a colored solution. Colored means colored to the visible eye, colored to the naked eye. That means there's some sort of something, uh, a wavelength within the visible spectrum, in which case we should be using UV vis spectroscopy or ultraviolet violet spectroscopy, which gives us answer D. Moving on to question 19. What is the systematic name for the product of the reaction above? Well, what these uh, catalysts do is going to cause a um, oxid oxidation of this species. And that means what's going to occur, um, it's going to be oxidized into an acid. And the acid is going to look like this. CH. CH3, CH2, C, and then we're going to have the 1 to the O, O, H. So this is definitely an acid. Now time to work out what is the systematic name. Well, their longest straight chain carbon is 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons long. So that means it's going to be a but anoic acid. And then the methyl groups are coming off of the first, second, third carbon. That means that we... D, 3-methylbutanoic acid. Question 20. This one was a little bit tricky. Thymine makes up 27% of the number of bases in a double strand of wheat DNA. Wheat DNA also contains... It was very easy to be thrown by this. So what you need to know was that A pairs with T and G with C. So therefore, if we have 27% of the DNA being T, thymine, that means another 27% is also going to be adenine. Adding those two things together, we get 54% is either A or T, and that means 46% is made up of both guanine and cysteine. Dividing that by two to find out how much is each in them, we find that there's 
of each of those different compounds. And the only answer that lines up with one of these is B, 23% being cytosine. You could have also worked out a similar thing by deducing that both A paired with a non-complementary base pair, either G or C, has to add up to 50%. So you could have done 50 minus the 27 to get you the 23. Fantastic, guys. That was questions 11 through 20 of the multiple choice question section. Thanks for watching. I'm Jesse, and this was the another episode of the 2014 VCE chemistry exam walkthrough. See you next episode.